I've been very lucky actually in uh, in my uh, career that I've been able to uh, uh, you know to work all over the world. Uh, I actually started uh, in aviation uh, straight off to university in British Airways, where I uh, just went through uh, you know training and so on. And um, I spent ten years in British Airways uh, with uh, my last job there actually being a very interesting one, looking after uh, all the financial. Uh, aspects British Airways um, alliances and operations in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So this meant I went back and forth from London to New York and Toronto and the Caribbean and South America, and you know, so very, very, very nice time. Um, but uh, after you know, uh, after ten years in, in British Airways, I decided I needed a change and went to um, my first uh, low cost airline, which was actually. Um, low-cost airline called Go that was set up by uh, British Airways to compete in the uh, in the low-cost sector. At that time, um, Ryanair and EasyJet, which you probably heard of, were starting to uh, get established and build the whole LCC sector in uh, uh, in the UK and Europe. And I thought, well, that's you know very interesting. Um, uh, development really of the uh, of the aviation market. So uh, uh, I went to go uh, in uh, in 1999. So just just before the the turn of the century, um, and that was also a very you know very exciting time. I was very lucky uh, to join just as Go was going through a big expansion, um, and you know a lot of things happened. We did a, a management buyout of Go, in fact, from uh, from British Airways, and. Uh, uh, continue to grow the bill, uh, the business, and then EasyJet came along and said, "Well, we want to buy, buy and go." And it was, um, it was one of those situations where, uh, yeah, honestly, your heart was breaking because it was, you know, the right business decision, but your your head was saying, you know, you absolutely must do this. So, uh, you know, we, we we sold go to, uh, you know, to EasyJet, and uh, and that's part of what's uh, helped uh, EasyJet grow into now. You know, a very very major airline in Europe, um, but that really gave me the the, the taste for for LCCs, um, the uh, and and the whole LCC, um, I guess expansion around the world was starting to really get underway because it started in the USA and then spread to the UK and then to Europe and so on. Um, so I then had a whole succession of different jobs um, at various LCCs in the Middle East, for example, I worked uh, there, I uh, worked in India, I worked in, uh, uh, and then I moved to, to Asia, I worked in the Philippines, Japan, Vietnam. And then, the, um, and then in 2013, the opportunity came up uh, to come to Hong Kong, which uh, you know, brings me up to date. And, um, and really all that was about was that uh, you know, Hong Kong Express had you know, long established airline um, was uh, was being operated alongside Hong Kong Airlines. You know, really as one combined airline, um, and it was doing it was doing fine. You know, in, in competition with with uh, with Cathay and, and Dragonair, trying to provide an alternative, uh, you know, service and offering and so on. But um, um, there wasn't really a competitive answer to the growing LCC presence at uh, um, uh, to, to, to Hong Kong um, and by that I mean um, there's some 16, 17, 18 LCCs that fly from other cities around uh, Asia to Hong Kong so uh, um, you know the shareholders uh, were really trying to decide well how do we compete with uh, you know Cathay and Dragonair on the one hand and also with uh, LCCs on the other hand, and uh, and they asked me to have a look at this, and, and really cutting a very long story short, it was, it was sort of obvious, which was break you know Hong Kong Express out from Hong Kong Airlines, and then restructure it and develop develop it into uh, um, you know Hong Kong's own uh, LCC, and it was uh, so that's that's really um, what we did, and I was asked to obviously you know lead all of that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've been doing that for the last, uh, you know, last two years, and uh, you know, I'm pleased to say that things are starting to, uh, you know, to really sort of come good. You know, a lot of work is starting to sort of show 
um, you know, uh, show the show the results, you know, the results coming through, and so on. So, yeah, quite quite happy with progress. Yeah. So, as a uh, successful business leader and a veteran in aviation industry, so do you have any uh, special approaches or unique ways in running the business? <laughs> I mean, there's no, you know, there's no uh, magic formula. That you know, there really isn't. But but I think. Um, you know the thick the key things to get right are you know get the team right for for a start um so the um we were very careful at the start of uh, of uh, the conversion of uh, hk express into an lcc to you know pretty much start with you know essentially a new management team and 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 you know new organization all the way through and that meant that certainly we had some um, challenges, you know, people learning their roles and all the rest of it, but it meant that we also brought in a lot of fresh ideas and so on, very talented people, particularly from other um, industries, and that brought, you know, a lot of um, energy and, you know, uh, good thinking, you know, f especially from, as I say, other other industries. Um, and uh, and that that I think has really sort of paid off. You know, we're starting to see the payoff now because as all those new people have um, built up their understanding of the airline and the LCC business model, they're starting to combine that knowledge with all their their own you know experience and skills and so on. We're starting to really get you know very good you know input and value from those people. So I think I think it's it's very important to get the team right. You know, get get that team right. Um, sec second thing I think is, is, is absolutely key is, is for everybody to be clear what we're trying to do. You know, you, ca you, can't, uh, you can't get the ball in the net if you don't know which net you're trying to get the ball, you know, which, which net you're shooting for. So uh, we work, um, you know, very hard on, on the communication. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And that at least helps um, orientate everybody, you know, towards the you know the you know the business goals um and then i think the you know the other thing is that certainly for the uh uh the the business sector that we operate in you know the lcc um uh, airline you know it's very much about being very disciplined about applying that lcc business model which has really been perfected um you know around the world so you know in a way we've got no real excuse uh um, but, but you know, follow it and follow it well. You know, all the sort of mistakes have been made by other people. So follow. You know, we 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 we've got to be very disciplined and uh, not sort of reinventing the wheel and follow follow a model that works. You know, focus on getting the costs down, um, and 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 you know, focus on 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 really meeting the you know the needs of our 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 key customer base, which is you know Hong Kong, but also. You know the Pearl River Delta because obviously a lot of people come over the border, you know, to access our low fares, and, and it seems to be coming together. Uh, so my next question is um, for our young young readers and industry peers. So do you have any lessons or insights you want to share with with them? There's a saying which is, um, uh, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know if you have something similar in Chinese, but it's, it, the saying goes along the lines of, it's amazing how lucky I get the harder I work. Um, and I think that's really about, you know, lots of people, uh, you know, hope for relatively instant success, and it just, it, it doesn't really come other than to a very few people. And, uh, but, uh, you know, if people are really prepared to be, you know, put the time in, uh, be patient, you know, um, really think about what they're doing and, and you know, learn their, their, their jobs and really make something of their, of, their, of their position, you know, then I think they'll succeed. And the most, uh, in many respects, the most valuable people to me in HK Express are people that get things done. You know, it's amazing how many people can talk and talk and talk, but don't actually make anything happen. You know, uh, and and that's very important. And I think you know, I would always say to uh, you know to anybody at, at the start of their career or trying to progress their career, you know, put the hours in. I, I don't mean work excessive excessive hours, I don't, but I do mean work hard. 
and you know and, and really make sure you at you you know you're doing something you're adding value anybody can push paper around a desk making things happen is uh, is much harder yeah. uh, looking back on, on your career uh, life do you have any remarkable experience just flashing from uh, in your brain well uh, oh um, let me think um, It's many, many. It's just how to uh, bring it out for uh, uh, for this. I, I think, you know, many, many that are you know sort of personal memories that you know mean a lot to me. But I think, I think probably what I would, what I what I've sort of learned is that, um, you know, I've I've worked in eight, ten different countries, and um, it's always uh, it's amazing how. Uh, how, do, how do you say this? You know, it's it's amazing how how much of this world really is one people. If you see what I mean, you know that we've all got our cultural differences and our different backgrounds. It's amazing how 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 much we have in common rather than what we have uh, differently. If you see what I mean, you know, time and time again, I would I would have people say to me, "Oh well, you know." Uh, whatever you're proposing, you know, might work in all these other countries, but doesn't work here. Uh, and I, if, if I if I had a, you know, I don't know, ten Hong Kong dollars for every time they, uh, somebody had said that to me, I'd be a, a millionaire. And and in fact, it's really not true. Actually, it's a, you know, it's excuse. It's a, it's an excuse to not change. And uh, you know, that's, you know, many personal experiences. But I think that's probably, you know. Um, one of the general learning uh, points, I suppose, uh, I, I, I've, uh, you know, I've had in my career. Okay, so then I want to uh, go into your cooperate, uh, cooperate part. So uh, you have mentioned and uh, uh, talk a little bit about the challenges you have in your home, in the city, in the Hong Kong market. So um, as people uh, argue that even though the Hong Kong have, every day has a lot of. Uh, air, airlines flying into the city, uh, flying into and from the city, but actually most of them seem to be unable to uh, take the advantage of the city's hub opportunity. So, uh, what does uh, Hong Kong Express plan to make the best of it? I think you make a very good point. You know that that Hong Kong's in in, in just a great location, both itself, but obviously being part, you know, of the of the wider. You know Pearl River Delta, and um, when I looked at the um, the opportunity for Hong Kong Express, this is something that was very very clear. You know the massive market opportunity presented by you know uh, Hong Kong and the Pearl River Delta. As we know, I mean it depends how far you 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 sort of draw the line, but we've got sixty to eighty million people within a few hours of Hong Kong, and we've got. Uh, um, you know, particularly on the mainland China side of the border, we've got many, we've got a you know a, a fantastic middle class emerging. You know, many people um, you know who want to travel, you know, and travel by air and so on. So, um, you know, when I'm uh, when I travel on our aircraft, uh, particularly for new routes, you know, I go up and down the aircraft just talking to passengers and so on. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a significant number. That have come over the border from Shenzhen, for example, or from uh, you know, or from Zhuhai, who are accessing the, uh, you know, really the low fares that we're offering. So, uh, you know, that's like one of those those kind of like basic things that sort of says, you know, yeah, you know, a, a low cost airline would work. Um, but one of the things that we we observed was that uh, airlines, you know, here in Hong Kong, there were a lot of very um, uh, attractive destinations that weren't really being served. You know, we did a lot of surveys, Facebook surveys, um, you know, Weibo surveys, we went on all the social media, and we asked the you know the people of Hong Kong and, and the surrounding area, you know, where do you want to fly? And uh, and the top you know destination which keeps coming up consistently, in fact, is Japan. You know, the Japanese, the various Japanese cities, and then Korea, and then Southeast Asia, and so on. And um, when we looked at the fares, you know, the airfares between Hong Kong and Japan, they were really, really high. You know, um, on a sort of a like versus like basis with, say, Singapore, they were approximately double, 
you know, and uh, and as we know in Hong Kong, you know, there's um, lots of people, you know, earning earning sort of quite good salaries, but things like um, living costs are, you know, very high. So, uh, you know, we, we sort of thought, well, the, you know, those very high airfares just don't really make um, make sense. And we've got a real opportunity here. Fantastic catchment area, very high fares, some great destinations that are not being served. So it was then, in a way, really a, a, a no-brainer, you know, to, to, to restructure HK Express into an LCC and then build up that uh, the route network focusing on, you know, Japan and Korea and Southeast Asia and also some, you know, some key destinations in China as well, particularly those that are, you know, neglected, if you like, by, you know, by the other carriers. So we fly to Ningbo and Wuxi and to Kunming and, um, and also some seasonal destinations, you know, Hai La, for example, uh, Lancho, and um, uh, and um, so that's get, that's given us a, a really nice, you know, a route network. And but what we're seeing is a lot of passengers who perhaps um, either couldn't afford to travel at all, or haven't travelled by air in a long time, you know, now starting to travel and travel more often. You know, and that's really what low fares do. They give people more opportunity, you know, to travel. And that's really, you know, been the key thing behind, uh, you know, HK Express's growth to date. Yeah, I want to know more about the Chinese mainland market because I have uh, read some uh, reports from the internet saying that the Chinese mainland market is actually uh, led by a uh, dominant and dominated by the um, uh, agency or group sales and yeah. it's far from being ready for free or independent travel. So is that true and uh, what, what is your business strategy in this uh, vast market? I think it's, when I, it's, a, it's a market that's changing, you know, and uh, um, you and I know that, uh, um, get, you know, go, go into any Chinese, you know, any mainland China city mm -hmm. and um, uh, you can't find anybody that is separated by more than a few inches from their mobile phone. You know, they've always got their mobile phone. So, so I actually think that, um, and, and it's obviously the same in Hong Kong, it's the same in, 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 in Asia. So part of, our, uh, part of our commercial strategy was very much about making booking online um, very easy you know, very, very uncomplicated. So that's both, you know, on desktops, but also on mobile, it's very easy. And uh, whilst you're right, that certainly on mainland China, many of our bookings initially were, you know, from travel agents, we're still very happy to work with travel agents. What we've seen is very strong growth over time in bookings direct on our website, you know, through people using their mobile phones, um, or, you know, using online travel agents, you know, Sea Trip, Taobao, for example. Um, and, 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 we, and we're very happy with that. I mean, from our perspective, what we want to do is get our, our low fares out there and, 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 and we let our guests really book whichever way they feel most comfortable. If they, if, they, if they prefer to book through a travel agent, that's absolutely fine. You know, we welcome the business. Um, if they want to book online direct on our website, you know, educateexpress.com, you know, that's fine as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I also read some uh, reports from the internet saying that uh, Hong Kong Express expect this year to be uh, your first uh, full year of operational profitability as a low-cost carrier. So is that, that true? Yes, it is. Um, the, uh, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a whole number of things um, have come together. Uh, we. We, uh, you know, as 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 as, as I mentioned, the, you know, the initial uh, we, the initial sort of step was, you know, restructuring to an LCC and and the restructuring to get the costs out and so on. You know, that's that's quite a long process, um, and which is still going on in many respects actually, but uh, that started to take quite a lot of cost out of our business. We've obviously had the, the benefit of um, fuel prices being down, you know, all airlines have, uh, but that's been, uh, that, that's been a big help. Um, you know, but then a lot of other things have started to work very well. We've got a decent sized network, you know, we've got a um, wide choice of destinations, um, all the sort of things like, you know, the online, booking through the call center, all these things are working very, very well. And, uh, 
and this has led to really, you know, very, very high load factors, you know, which is the percentage of our, our um, aircraft seats that are filled, you know, at a record uh, um, load factor in August of, you know, 92.5%. Um, and, and, you know, year to date, you know, we've been, we've been at uh, 84%. Um, so that, you know, that, so that's been very good. Um, and, and, you know, what, what we've also focused on is getting all the basics right. So, um, you know, we've got a very safe airline, we believe, uh, you know, we are, we are um, IOSA accredited. We also, um, um, you know, we're seven star um, uh, sort of ranked um, for safety from a, from a third party company called um, Airline Ratings that looks after all of this. So, so we make sure we get the basics right. It's very safe, you know, on time and when the number, the number one um, on time uh, airline here in Hong Kong. So, we, you know, we, our on time performance is better than all the other Hong Kong based carriers. Um, you know, and then when you get on board, you know, you've got a, um, you've got a really nice, you know, sort of Hong Kong experience. And, you know, our customer satisfaction ratings are very, very high, you know, from the surveys, the third party surveys. And, um, you know, we get very good, uh, very good satisfaction scores. So the so we sort of really what we're trying to do is 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 keep it simple you know great network low fares and then a you know very safe on time you know secure um, operation so you know so that so that people just feel that you know really they can they can trust us to get their you know their holiday or their journey you know off on a on an on a nice on a nice footing. And you know they can save a lot of money, and then spend the money in the hotels or the shops or, or whatever when they get to their destination. Okay, so from the <coughs> industry perspective, uh, what where does the um, where what is the latest um, trend, and where does the growth driver lie ahead? Well, um, the best way to think about this is that um, in uh, in most. Uh, major population areas of the world, um, LCCs account for about a third, maybe 25% to, to a third of all the, um, you know, the seats and, and, uh, and passengers carried in a particular market. So they've got about a third of the market. In North Asia, so I'm really talking about anywhere north of, say, Vietnam, so China, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, and so on, and Hong Kong. That LCC market share is closer to seven, eight percent. It's quite a difficult number to to work out. So, and yet, if you think about it, in North Asia, uh, perhaps not so, so much Japan and Korea, but certainly mainland China, um, you know, Taiwan and so on. You've got, um, but particularly mainland China, you've got a you know a, a very strong growth in the middle class. You've got people who want to travel. They're starting to have, um, you know, a good uh, uh, a good disposable income. You've got the government supporting the whole, you know, one belt one road initiative as 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 part of, you know, expanding China's links, uh, you know, to the world. And um, yeah, yeah. So we we're very happy to be able to um, kind of, you know, fit in with that trend. You know, that 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 that. Uh, expansion of the travel market and uh, you know we think that <coughs> you know because people are quite careful with their money you know they don't want to spend it on you know throw it around I mean obviously you know maybe maybe some rich people do but most people they're, they're, you know they're quite quite careful with their money mm -hmm. they want to spend it in the shops or you know then uh, we think that the uh, the low fares offering that we provide is very, very attractive and will keep growing. And um, certainly, you know, I would say that by, um, you know, 2020, 2025, you know, LCC market share in North Asia certainly ought to get to, you know, somewhere around, you know, 20%, 25%. You know, it's difficult to be, you know, exactly um, accurate on this, but. My last question, uh, maybe uh, is a very too much discuss discussed topic. That is, the SAR government is establishing Hong Kong as an aviation hub with the 
early implementation of a third runway and the additional charge imposed on passengers flying from Hong Kong. So, um, uh, what do you think? Uh, and what what does these initiatives will mean to the budget airlines like Hong Kong Express? Well, I think the the, the the absolute key thing here is is all about that you know that third runway, and Hong Kong really you know very very badly needs a third runway. It needs it now, honestly. Um, it doesn't uh, you know eight years is almost almost too long to wait. My single biggest issue, business issue that I have to deal with, is uh, just the lack of takeoff and landing slots at Hong Kong Airport and you know from the the flying that we've been doing uh, um, you know all our operations of the past couple of years we we're very clear the market demand is there and in fact you know I, I say over and over again if we could get more slots you know we could uh, Hong Kong Express could open at least another 20 destinations very very quickly so that's 20 more destinations for everyone in this room you know 20 more low fare destinations and so on. And, and that's, you know, and that's really the issue. And um, <coughs> um, whilst we, uh, you know, we, we just need that runway. And um, uh, whilst we certainly very much understand, you know, environmental concerns and um, from our own part are, 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 are ready to do, you know, all, all sensible steps to mitigate any impact on the environment and, and are also Investing in the latest, you know, uh, in the latest aircraft that um, reduce emissions and more efficient and all these things, um, you, you know, we, we just have to all understand that um, no runway, you know, means that much less choice and um, business moves to other, you know, other countries, and and quite honestly, fares uh, into and out of Hong Kong will go up, you know, quite considerably, and I. I, I, my, my belief is that most people in Hong Kong, you know, they, you know, they appreciate and enjoy the opportunity to travel and want to keep doing so. Uh, obviously, they want to do so in a way that minimizes the impact on the environment, and the, you know, that's true of all of us. But really, the third runway is, a, is an absolute must in, uh, in our opinion, so we, we're very strong supporters of it. What about the additional charge? Um, will will it burden the your pressures? Sure. I mean, they look um, anything that adds to um, our, you know our cost flows through to uh, you know to passengers. So you know we we uh, as you might expect are are always you know in, in 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 discussions with the government and so on to sort of say well how can we minimize or eliminate the cost because we're all trying to grow the aviation business and uh, you know at the same time we understand that of course the airport's got to you know the uh, got to pay for the runway so uh, um, we, you know the, we we absolutely you know 100% you know behind the runway um, we just um, hope and, and, and believe that it will be built in the most cost-efficient way uh, possible, you know, to minimise the cost on uh, all the travellers, and that, you know, that's really the key. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that should be all of my questions, but before wrapping up the interview, uh, is there anything I feel to ask about that you think worth of mentioning and sharing with me? Um, well, I, what I would like, uh, which would be very uh, um, good uh, to hear, is from your readers. Where would you like us to fly? Where would you like us to fly? Um, because seriously, um, the um, you know we do do a lot of uh, you know a lot of surveys and so on. Um, the uh, and 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 it 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 is one of the top things that determines where we fly. Um, you know, sometimes we obviously we're constrained by aircraft availability and pilots and things like that. But you know, have your readers write in, tell us that this is this is their dream destination, like Hong Kong, because there's no services or the fares are outrageous. You know, but that's uh, um, that's what I'd ask of China Daily.